Hello everybody, my name is E.C. Adams, the entertainer extraordinaire, right here in Las Vegas. Sunday, May the 22nd, I will be performing my E.C. Adams presents the legendary men of music. Listen, you don't want to miss this show. It's going to be on fire, it's going to be exciting, it's going to be powerful. We're doing everything from the Temptations to Four Tops. Elton John, Elvis Presley, Lionel Richie, the Jackson Five, we're doing it all, you guys, at the Italian American Club, and that's on 2333 East Sahara, Las Vegas, Nevada. Tickets are only $40, you all. Tickets are only $40. Go to IACVegas.com. That's IACVegas.com and get your tickets or call 702-808-0446. I look forward to seeing you there. We're going to have an amazing time. God bless you. TV network and I do have the pleasure of sitting here with E.C. Adams, the gentleman, the extraordinaire. He is one of the artists that I have totally admired everything about him and now I'm here in his home and thank you for welcoming me here. Thank you for, thank you for having me. It's an honor for me to have you here. Absolutely. And you know, we're matching. Come on now. <laughs> if I can match you, see Come on. <laughs> But uh, here in Las Vegas, uh, you are one of the most um, entertaining artists. Mm -hmm. And that uh, with all the awards that you have won, uh, we are so proud of you to represent uh, here in Las Vegas, the entertainment capital of the world. Wow. And today, right in your home, uh, I'm sitting here with you, and I was able to read, and I know even more about you <laughs> than just your stage presence. Right. Okay, awesome. So, uh, when you were growing up, mm -hmm. you grew up in Mississippi. You know what, actually, I was born in Mississippi. I was raised here in Las Vegas. Mama moved here when I was three years old. What? So, I've been here all my life. Okay, so then at eight years old, yeah. you started singing. That's when I saw the Jackson 5 on TV and I knew that's what I wanted to do. Yes, Absolutely. Exactly. Like everyone else that admired Michael Jackson, what was your inspiration of the Jackson 5? Well, being eight years old and having an opportunity to see the Jackson 5s perform on TV, right? It was on TV. And I saw all the excitement that it brought the audience. I saw Michael smiling and singing and dancing and his brothers and they all moving together. I got excited and I tell you, I knew that's what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to be able to bring that kind of joy to people. So then, you know, where you were being raised in your home, in mm -hmm. your parents' home, were they supportive? Um, you know what? The thing about it is, is uh, my, my mom didn't even know I sang. Because, I, you know, I kept it a secret. I actually, uh, my sisters and brothers were all in the same house. And I actually would rehearse in the bathroom by myself. I would rehearse and I didn't tell anybody. You know, because again, you know, as a little kid, you just don't know. And so, but I knew that's what I wanted to do. So what I would do, I would be in the bathroom every night, I would rehearse, stand in the mirror doing my best, Michael Jackson, doing my thing. And um, mama had us in church, you know, we grew up in church. Mm -hmm. And so one day in, at, at a choir rehearsal, the choir director asked anybody that they want to sing a solo because we were going to do a men's day program. I'll never forget it. We are going to do a men's day program, St. James Missionary Baptist Church. And, and he asked, he said, does anybody want to sing a, a solo? And, I remember just doing this and standing up, scared as all know what, but I knew I wanted to do that. And so he taught me my very first solo, uh, Walk Around Heaven All Day. Oh, I'll never forget it. And I, and I got an opportunity to sing it, and when I stood up in church to sing it uh, for the ministry program, my mom eyes looked like, well, <laughs> oh. <laughs> again, she didn't know. And, um, and I got a standing ovation, and I knew that's what I wanted to do. The feeling of that never left me. Um, again, the, it has been a long journey. I didn't know exactly how, what, where, how I was going to get there, but I knew that's what I wanted to do. So I, I always tell people I was born with a smile on my face and a song in my heart. Absolutely. And that was a passion. You have this saying, you have a passion. Uh, what do you mean by that? Because uh, music, I have a passion for music. Mm -hmm. um, I don't just hear music, I feel music. So that's, that's when you see me on stage and you see me, the, because I feel everything that I'm giving you all, I feel it. So that's, that's that passion that I feel. Mm -hmm. So when you were being educated and you went to school, did you know exactly what you were going to be uh, uh, studying? Well, you know, this is the thing. I went to school uh, studying data processing. Mm -hmm. uh, and at one time, I wanted to um, 
to be a defense attorney. That's what I wanted to be at one time. But music was always my thing. Even at, even in uh, elementary, junior high, high school, and in college, I always sang in the choirs, male choruses, um, the mixed choir, and I always did music. And so it never left me, that music, that feeling of music. So all the different talent shows and stuff, I would enter the, the talent shows and the different events that they would have on campus. And so I knew that's what I wanted to do. Again, just knowing the direction of how I was going to get there was different. And so it never left me. It never left me. And it, and it was more powerful than a nine to five. What about your brothers and your sisters? Uh, do you have uh, any sisters or brothers? <laughs> You'd be amazed. <laughs> <laughs> I have three brothers and four sisters. Awesome. But I'm the only one that does music. I'm the only one that does music. And so, um, you know, they, they love what I do. And, you know, they're, they're it was a natural thing for me to do music. Like, I can hear a song, and I naturally could do it. I naturally could sing it. I naturally would feel it. Um, don't get me wrong, in school, though, we did study. We did study those different things in our, in our choir class and different things like that. But learning the technical end of it, like, there's some people who can sight read and different things like that. I don't sight read, but I just hear music. It's in, it's in, my, it's in my soul. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. you was coming out west. Yeah. And so when you came out west, uh, you know, were you able to accomplish the things that you uh, set out for in the beginning? Well, when I first left college, I, I left, well, actually when I first left high school, I went to college, I played college basketball. Okay. You see, a lot of people don't know that about me. I played college basketball. Oh, and what I did was, you play? A guard. A point guard. <laughs> so now, that was me all day long. <laughs> oh, you was the main yeah, guard. Yeah, you know, yeah. and, and, I, and, I, and used to being the captain, I was the captain of the team, so I'm used to, you know, directing the show, but... Again, music was more powerful than anything that I've ever, um, and even though I had a passion for basketball, and I had a passion for that too, um, and I go hard with everything that I do. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a rehearsal, I rehearse every day. I rehearse every day. And so the music was always still in my soul. And so the thing about it was, is um, doing music, I used to model. And so at the same time, I'm modeling, I'm playing basketball, and then I'm doing music on the sides. You know what I'm saying? Part-time, little jobs, little, little clubs. And at that, back then, we didn't make money. They gave us uh, uh, chicken wings and french fries. Oh. <laughs> yes, they did. That's what they did. And so, and I remember those days, you know, and again, um, having that passion in my heart. When I came home from college, some friends of mine that went to, uh, we, I went to high school here in Las Vegas at El Rod High School. Mm -hmm. I had friends who went to different high schools at that same also. Mm -hmm. And so we all got together when I came home and we put together a band called The Look Band. Yeah. And we all had Jerry Curls, Low Curls. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? And again, we would sing in all the little clubs over on the west side mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And we got paid chicken wings and french fries to get all gas money. Really, mm -hmm. and so, I, and then I worked a day job mm -hmm. at the same time. And working a day job, I, I promise you, every day I would pull up into the parking lot of places, and, stuff, and th that wasn't me. Mm -hmm. That I wasn't living my passion. I wasn't walking in my passion. Mm -hmm. The opportunity was presented to me to join a group. I used to work for the city of Las Vegas at the time. I was working for the city of Las Vegas, mm -hmm. and every day I would go there. It was it was a job. That's just what it was. It was a job. I don't have a job. I have a career. You know, and I and I and having a career, you have a, like I'm speaking to you. You can hear the passion from me. It's nothing like it. It's nothing like being able to sing, dance, and entertain people and see the joy on people's faces. You can change somebody's day. Somebody you never know what somebody's going through, and a song can change their day. Or singing Happy Birthday to them can change their day. So I hope I answered your question. Okay, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, this is the reason why we want to come to your home so we can find out. How you grew up and what your perspective of music because mm -hmm. music is um, an entertainment uh, factor and uh, it's one that uh, even uh, the most powerful love music yes and uh, being men that you were raised in the church mm -hmm. so you were able to get along with anyone and coming up being an african-american did you have any uh, thing that's holding you back were you ever did you ever felt like you were denied because of your skin color? Well, you know what? Sometimes people can, uh, we can run into that every day. If we, you know, just a normal, being a, being a black man. Mm -hmm. and, and my thing was, I never even took time to even think about that. You know, That's when good. we grew up, I never took time to even think about that because I was too busy. I knew I was focused. I knew what I wanted to be. I knew I wanted to be somebody. Right. I knew I just wasn't going to hang out. 
I'm going out. I knew I just wasn't going to be in no gangs or sell drugs. Or, I knew I wasn't going to be in anything like that. I knew I wanted to be somebody. Like even today, I don't, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I never have. And so, but my thing was my passion for being successful, my passion for being somebody. That's what, that's what, my name means everything to me. Mm -hmm. And so I always wanted to be somebody. I wanted, I wanted, I heard um, James Brown was in the movie when he was growing up and his, and his grandmother told him, he said, they're going to remember your name. They will remember your name. And so nobody ever said that to me, but I just felt that way. You know, I felt that way. But in order for them to remember your name, what are you going to do for them to remember your name? And so that's why my show is called the ECI Spreading the Love Tour. It's all about spreading love to people, love and peace and happiness. Mm -hmm. And it's about respect. And it's not just a stage thing, it's a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. It's a lifestyle. And so when I'm around anybody, you know, I never met a stranger. Absolutely. I never met a stranger. So that's how, that's how, for me, that's how it is for me. And so I never even paid attention to the, the negative sides of the racism. I know it's out there. Mm -hmm. It's out there every day. You know, but we have to just be the best that we can do. And I live my best life every day. I just had my birthday just passed a couple of weeks ago. Awesome. And I am just living my best life. Awesome. You're living your best <laughs> life. Yeah. And not only that, um, we want to congratulate you for being inducted into the Black Music Hall of Fame. Oh, man. Thank you. And, uh, you know, that's the reason why we know dreams come true. Yes, ma'am. And the passion that you have, I mean, that even shows you exactly the results of it and everyone around you. Yes. yes. And though you had a remarkable life, I mean, <laughs> great. I mean, uh, you've been on the, you've been on every, practically every stage. Mm, that's and right, so that's the right. following and even the people that look up to you, mm. uh, it's a great example. Mm. So, you know, to the youth, if there's something that you would say to them in regards to following their dreams and keeping the dreams alive. Yeah. One thing that I would always definitely tell them, never give up on your dream. I don't care what naysayers can say, good, bad, and different. Never give up. Always believe in you. If I didn't have the belief that I have in me, because, you know, I, don't get me wrong, when I grew up, there were people who didn't think I was good enough to do this. You know, people thought I would never be successful. There were people that told me, oh, man, that's not for you. I wouldn't leave that day job, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, but I always believed in me. You know, I always believed in me. The good Lord up above gave me the work all to know that you got to believe in you. And then you'll show them, you'll see, you'll see. I had an opportunity, you know, I was blessed enough to all the different stages that I've been on to host for Miss Sherry Gordy, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. And the daughter of Barry Gordy Jr. One of the most amazing things that happened to me in my music career was to meet Barry Gordy Jr. And she introduced me to Barry Gordy Jr. And I always got to thank Miss Sherry Gordy for that. Right. <laughs> I always have to thank her for that. She introduced me to an icon. A legend who started Motown music. Come on, Motown, come on. I was right there with you. That was a wonderful yeah. show, and we were able to give that platform. Yes. And she was able to bring, you know, people of your character mm -hmm. and your uh, talent. Mm -hmm. And we were really, we were just awed mm -hmm. by your, by your presence, uh, by your wardrobe. Okay. I mean, I think they were calling you Liberace or so. <laughs> <laughs> no, Motown Liberace. <laughs> Uh, the office, and I'm like, I, I'm just blessed to see you have the same right. colors on there. What do you think of like? It's all good. Yeah. The one thing about Sherry Gordy's that mm -hmm. I love so much, even even I could been one of the hosts on her show. Being the host was amazing, mm -hmm. but the thing that I loved about it even more that, it, like you said, it gave a platform for artists who didn't have a platform, mm -hmm. and it was live streamed all over the world. And so a lot of artists here in Las, there's so much talent here in Las Vegas and all over the world. But I'm gonna speak for Las Vegas right mm -hmm. now, but. There's so much talent here that don't have a platform. And Sherry Gordon Presents gave them a platform. Absolutely. Yeah. Way before we were doing yes. social media. That's right. And that's right. you know, that's how things work. I mean, according to the universe, mm -hmm. according to your rhythms and whatever you're doing in your life, yes. in your lifestyle. So uh, that's one thing about it now. We want to make sure that uh, everyone come out and support you to this wonderful event at the Italian oh, American yeah. Club. I'm I mean, that's the that's the reason for the season. That's, that's the reason that's I'm right. here. <laughs> that we have to go out and support our artists. Even now is even more so because we're able to, you know, to actually go out without a mask now. Yes. Uh, those mandates have been moved. Mm -hmm. And can you imagine uh, right now? Uh, that we're so excited to come out and that's the reason why we're going to come out to see you at the uh, Italian American Club. Oh, wow. Thank um, you so much. Give me some uh, information in regards, what were you doing when the whole world was shut down? Yeah. 
Well, you know, it's so interesting you say that, and that, and that is another reason why the passion and the love that I have for what I do, because it was taken away from us for almost three years. Mm -hmm. When the pandemic hit, I had my, my, my tour schedule was booked, and the last, last dinner show I did was uh, February of 2020, I did a Valentine's Day show. Mm -hmm. Right after that, everything got shut down. So my whole tour schedule got wiped out. And so I know there's a lot of entertainers out there who can relate to that because things were taken away from us just like that. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 it leads me to always believe something that I knew in my heart is never take this for granted. Right. Never take this for granted. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why every time I hit the stage, I give everything I have. I don't leave with nothing in the tank. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that, you know, everybody deserves a great show. Right. Whether it's five or 500 people out there, mm -hmm. everybody deserves a great show. And if they took time out to come see me, mm -hmm. I'm getting ready to give them a great show. And that means presentation. Everything from presentation mm -hmm. to vocals to singing to dancing to choreography. That means everything. Back in the old school, people used to dress. Remember right. when the artists oh, would dress and come that. to the stage, yeah. you know? So that's about presentation. I'm big on presentation. Right. And so when the pandemic hit, all that was taken away from us. Absolutely. All of that was taken away from mm -hmm. us. And there was a lot of us who went through depression. Mm -hmm. A lot of people that were stressed out. We lost some entertainers too at that time. Um, me, myself, there were days that I, I have to be honest with you that was very frustrating for me. And I had to take my time and I had to pray to God and thank him, number one, for bringing me this far. And I know he didn't bring me this far to leave. I know that. And so I just kept the faith. I always stayed rehearsing whatever I do. And I want to say that to a lot of artists out there too to know that up and coming artists, I rehearse every day. There's something in your craft that you can do every day in your craft to get better. I mean, I mean, I mean, everybody's wonderful. Don't get me wrong, not everybody's wonderful no more. But out of all of the awards and everything that I've, I've happened to accomplish in my life, I still rehearse every day. And I learned that from Prince. And, and if Prince can rehearse every day, trust me, ECF can rehearse every day. Absolutely. You, yeah. saw, you, you, you mentioned two names here today, Michael Jackson and Jackson 5. Mm -hmm. And also Prince. Mm -hmm. And on this day we're sitting here today is one of the days that actually that Prince, uh, this was the day that uh, Prince had passed. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so today all over the world we are, you know, remembering his um, legacy, you mm -hmm. know. But the living legacy in you right now is that you live in your life. Uh, even when you were inducted into the um, Black Music Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. You received your award on Michael Jackson's birthday. Did you know and that? I did. You know, and the thing about it is, and in that show, when I, uh, I I did a song in that show, and I sang Prince in that show. <laughs> and that's um, yeah, absolutely. A couple of months ago, I did a tribute to Michael Jackson and Prince. Very special. Those are very special. Those are two artists that um, that just live in my heart. You know, they paved the way uh, and laid for me. There's a lane for me. They really did. They paved the lane for me. Just Michael Jackson said, never be afraid to be different. Right. And never yeah, never be afraid to be different. And always pay attention to detail. Absolutely. And so that's why if you I'm a very detailed person, if you know. And again, I, I that I, again it's to my heart that I never I was never afraid to be different. I was never afraid to step out there and just go for it. I was never afraid to I, you know, I design my own clothes, I have my own style, right? So I was never afraid of wearing different colors that other people didn't wear. I just doing things my way. Right. Yeah. You know, I kind of felt like Oprah coming in and talking about <laughs> the Jackson thing. And I, I feel in a special way, I'm special to be here with you today as well. And well, like I said, um, the people that you have um, uh, work and people who inspire you is the same, like Sherry Gordy. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, she gave me the platform to stream. He's mm -hmm. stream the 169 countries. Yes. And so it's important that we come out even to support you now because uh, we need to get people out. The Italian American Club, and that's Sunday, May the 22nd, 2022. Doors open at 7 p.m. Showtime is 8 p.m. You can go to IACVegas.com and get your tickets or call 702-808-0446. I promise you, you got to get an amazing show. It's called E.C. Adams presents the legendary men of music. And we're doing everything from the tips to the tops to the Jackson Fives, Elvis Sinatra, Elton John. Man, we're doing so many amazing, legendary men. Jackie Wilson, Chubby Checker. Oh, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be fire. It's going to be a lot of fun. Put your dancing shoes on because we're going to be dancing and having a great time. Absolutely. And I know I'll be there and you should be there too. 
I would thank you so much for this time. Thank and you. I know uh, it's an honor. Um, and I know too, you you make your music in your studio. Your studio is right here too. Right? Yes, it is. Uh -huh. so, yes, it is. I have my own I have my own music out also, which is a blessing. Which is a blessing, and I'm thankful to God for that. And so again, I'm just excited about what God has in the future for me moving forward, and I'm excited to bring it to everybody. Absolutely. There you have it. That's the E.C. Adams, the gentleman. And we'd like to thank you for joining us here and definitely support him in all that he do. Thank you, Valerie McConnell, the E.C. Adams. Thank you. Hi, I'm standing here with E.C. Adams. And E.C., I'm so excited about the Italian American Club event. Why don't you tell all your fans and your friends, and if you don't know him, you're going to get to know him. <laughs> Hello everybody, my name is E.C. Adams, the Entertainer Extraordinaire. Listen, Sunday, May 22nd, 2022, I'll be at the Italian American Club, and that's on 2333 East Sahara, Las Vegas, Nevada. You can go to IACVegas.com and get your tickets, or call 702-808-0446. Doors open at 7 p.m., showtime is 8 p.m. E.C. Adams presents the legendary men of music. We are going to have a good time. If you want to dance, you want to sing along, you want to clap your hands, trust me, it's going to be an amazing evening, and you are cordially invited. I look forward to seeing you. Thank